A couple months ago, I put together a new camera rig for these videos. The body of it is the Black Magic Micro Cinema Camera. I bought myself a new Metabone Speed Booster so that I could use my Canon EF mount glass. I attached a 7 inch monitor so that I could see what I'm looking at. And I popped a Rode Video Go mic on the top of it for my audio. One of the things I also did was created a temporary battery solution to be able to hold 18650s and mount on the back with kind of a V mount battery system. So that pops off and that these kind of fold out and that allows you to put the batteries in and you clip it back onto its base plate. And then on the back of the camera is a receptacle for this mount. So I had all of this hanging off the back of my camera while I was testing. This allowed me to configure different battery sizes for my camera. Um, I could do a 3S or a 4S. I could do 8,000 milliamp or 6,000 milliamp or 4,000 milliamp. And it just let me kind of play with the battery size as I was recording these to kind of figure out the best size for me. And what I found out was that a 6,000 milliamp battery was probably going to be my best bet. It wasn't too big, it wasn't too small. It lasted just about the same length as recording three hours on the camera, which is how much the memory card can hold at the bit rate that I use. So since I knew what size battery I was going to, I can make something a little bit more permanent. So I made one of these. It is a 4S battery with 5,000 milliamps. And if I did the math correct, that comes out to be about 83 watt hours. It has a regular barrel connector on the side and it has a balance plug on the bottom and it has a display on it. So I can press this button and see what the voltage is. So far it's working out really well and I'm happy with the way it's performing. On the back again I have one of my little V-mount inspired clips that just slide onto the mount on the back of the camera. Since this one's working so well and I haven't had any problems with it, I'm going to go ahead and make myself a second one. So I'm going to quickly go over the parts that make up the internals of the camera and then we'll go ahead and get started in building them. The batteries come from Turnigy and they are 5000 milliamp one cell LiPo batteries. They have a positive and negative all on the same side and I'll be using four of these inside the camera. The next item is the voltage readout. It's an all-in-one system I bought off of Amazon. It has a little adjuster on the back so that I can fine tune it. We have a momentary button. And then the last component is the balance lead that I use to balance the batteries as I'm charging them. All of that is wrapped up inside of this housing. It is a two-part housing that is screwed together with six screws on the back. I designed this myself and 3D printed it and it goes together quite nicely.
let me explain what I just did and how I configured this battery pack. The two center leads are going to go to the plug. So if you'd imagine this is the plug of the battery pack. And this plug is attached to the positive and negative in the middle of this battery pack. These are positive and negative of two separate batteries. So positive of the main plug comes to this battery. The negative of this battery is connected to the positive of the battery behind it. And then the negative of this battery is connected to the positive of the battery beside it. And then the negative of this battery is connected to the positive of the battery in front of it. And then the negative is connected to the negative side of that plug. And that gives me my 4S configuration. So after I connect all those, I need to connect the balance lead. And the balance lead is a way that the charger, which I use the ISDT Q6 Plus, and it has a balance port on the side. And what the balance lead does is it allows the charger to know the voltage of each individual battery. And as you can see on the balance lead, each wire is a different color. So we'll start with the outermost, which makes the most sense. It is the positive and negative lead, and those connect to the same ports that the main battery plug is connected to. The red will be connected to the positive, and then the black will be connected to the negative. And then for the three wires in the middle, you want to connect each one of those in order to the connection point between each battery. The red is connected to the positive of the first battery. The blue is going to be connected to the second battery, which is this one, the one behind it. And then the yellow, which is the third lead, is connected to the third positive, which is this one. And then the fourth one, which is the white, is connected to the positive of the fourth battery, which is this one. So that means that any pair of wires will give you the voltage of each individual cell. Connecting the red and then the blue will give you the voltage of battery one and then connecting the blue to the white, you'll get the voltage of the second battery, so on and so forth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solder all this up together. I'm gonna do it off camera because I really don't have a good way to record everything, but I'm gonna solder this all up, and when I come back, I'll have a battery pack with all the leads on it, and we can start putting it into the housing. Now that the battery pack is built, it's time to start working with the housing.
inventory is complete and it's in focus. The last thing I need to do is print out the little clip and acetone glue it to the back of this so that I can exchange it in and out with the other battery. I went ahead and charged it last night and the battery is at full capacity, 16.89, something like that. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoy these videos. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. If you want a list of components that I use to make this, go ahead and ask and I will add them to the description. Go out and do something you enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.